Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Welcome to this week's Friday live stream. Hope everybody had a good week. So on this stream, so a uh, little tease about AppSheet Insider that I got going on. I'm going to review some comments that we got going on from this week. There's been some good uh, engagement going on. Uh, there have been some helpful uh, updates to automation. And that's going to be an AppSheet news. And for the remainder part, I'm going to continue what I was doing from last week. Uh, so I was doing the customer specific products for the uh, shopping cart series. And I completely left off the part where I integrated ordering those products. So in this live stream, I'm going to go over that be part two. Anyways, that's all I got. So let's get to it. All right, so what are we doing today? So everything that I got going on on my uh, website, right? So that's the first thing I wanna talk about is appsheetinsider.com. So it should be live if you go to appsheetinsider.com, right? Um, it's really kind of basic right now. I, I don't really have a whole lot going on, but I've got some basics put inside there. So you can head on over there. You can kind of check it out. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to um, highlight is I'm going to be implementing a glossary of terms. Um, so there's um, nothing in there right now, but you can click the plus button and add a new term into the, the, uh, the glossary. And, you know, the idea was, well, so there's a lot of terms out there that are like official app sheet terms. Sure. But there's also things like an enhanced dashboard or the quick update system, you know, things where like, or like the word or ref update, you know what I mean? So there's like certain phrases and terminology that I use. And I know a bunch of other people use that aren't any official term anywhere in the system anywhere. So this is hopefully going to be a way for people to, um, submit terms that they're confused about, they're lost about, and we can define them. You know what I mean? Um, uh, other than that, the only real big update I got on this um, about the, the website is I've got a conditional quick edit program that you can run through. Um, so that's what the idea is. You know, I've got a field that's a quick edit and uh, I want to be able to only allow somebody to modify what's in that field at a certain time. Like they can only change the price when the order is open, right? So like there's a billion of these situations where it's like, I want to be able to do it, but only sometimes, right? So this is going to walk you through how to do it. The fun thing about uh, what I've kind of got going on over here is not only does this show you what you need to do and walk you through step by step and give you little tips and tricks along the way, but you also have access to a group. And this is the thing that I think is really going to kind of make a big difference about things is because you can come inside here and then everything in this group is specific to the thing that we're dealing with, right? So like everything inside this little community forum section whatever right it's all about quick edits so anytime you got a question about quick edits you can come here and you can drop a question in there anytime somebody comes up with some super clever thing with it they can come in here and they can post it so anytime that you need to know something about what you're working on you just go to this community this little group right here and it's all contained inside there and my hope is like, I, you know, we're going to, I'd like to create more of these and open it up so other people could add their own groups and create their own training programs and their own whatever. Like I, I'd like to open this up for everybody. That's really the goal and the hope in mind. Uh, the only, so let's see what else. Um, so that's the a la carte or the, it's the, uh, yeah, a la carte learning. Um, I don't think there's any new auto tables. Yeah, I haven't done really th any new things with the auto tables. The only other major thing is um, sample apps. So if you were checking out my uh, video that I just posted an hour ago, it's about how to do a sample app. Uh, I'm sorry, how to do an enhanced dashboard. So this is something where 
It's like the interactive dashboard, but it's manually created by you. And so the idea is that, you know, we can include multiple things. So I released a sample app and a video that walks through what the sample is, how to put it together, how it works, blah, 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 all of that. And if you want a copy of that sample app, you can obviously go to my portfolio on my, um, on my app sheet portfolio. Or if you just go to multitechvisions.com, you can get a link to the portfolio right here. Um, and if you go to my portfolio in here, I have this how to app section that I'm adding in here. And so you can get the enhanced dashboard sample app. I'm also working on a new series of sample apps that I'm going to call the evolution series. And the idea is the same thing that I've got going on. The first one that's going to drop into that is the um, shopping cart series, because with that one, what I did is I kind of I. I created several different versions of the sample app at various stages of its evolution. And so the idea is like you could see where it started and then you can see the ne very next thing. So I have a base and then you can see the very next thing that I did. I added a force sync option into it. And then the very next thing I did is I added a quantity input. And then the very next thing I did is I added a blueprint table for customer products. And like this is just 4.1. I'm going to be doing 4.2 today. So make sure you stick to stick to the end. But uh, so the idea is I'm going to take all of these, all of them that are in series. And, you know, I plan on doing more, which is entirely driven by you. So if you want to see a further evolution of the shopping cart series app, let me know in the comments below what you want added. Um, but I'm going to add all of these into a special place on my website where you can then go through each one. They'll all be in series equally. I'll have extra bits and pieces that I can put around, maybe some little videos and things, whatever. I'm kind of leaving this up to whatever, whatever happens when we get there. Do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, so that's basically all I got looking for nope nobody in the chat that's all i got for this first section so let's move on to all right so comments there were some pretty good comments on uh on youtube this time with uh, if i just open it up really quick and go to comments yeah there's some pretty good comments in here. A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of well wishes. A lot of you know positive statements and everything, which is very, very, very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, I very much need this sort of external validation in order to keep going. Being real here, so thanks. <laughs> There's also some really good uh, um, engagement from Ami here. He's talking about a really good typical use case for um, the sort of product tables that the customer product tables, the blueprint things that I was going over. Um, and he talks about how like you could use that for a CRM for a uh, like a food supplier, um, which is fantastic. I love stuff. I love seeing. I love getting into the mind of other people so that I can see how they would use the thing that like I just told them about, I guess, whatever, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's really cool to see how people use the same thing because it's like every person uses it differently, but it's the same thing. It's like, I always talk about app sheet, like it's ice cream, right? Ice cream is ice cream, right? It's the same ingredients. It's just, how you add other bits to it and how what ratios and whatever whatnot right so like what's your flavor of ice cream still ice cream same thing it's napshi dap um okay could let's see so dj flex kid says could you do a clip if i can get a zoom going on here could you do a clip uh, on CSV export of a slice filter view. Just can't seem to find any useful material on the particular area. The export action seems to export the whole table, even though the slice only shows a couple of rows. Yeah, there's some peculiarities with um, exporting things on the CSV. Um, like there's some other things like when you, when you export, it doesn't give you the names of the columns 
like the actual CSV file that you get, like the file names, if you pay, if you look, it's not the actual column names. It's the display name that you, that you have in the system. So there's like little things like that. That's like, you kind of need to know ish, um, in order to move forward. So yeah, DJ flex kid, totally. I'll put that on the list and, uh, get it in there. Whole bunch of whole bunch of well wishes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go back and give all these hearts later on. Uh, okay, amazing video, Doctor Arthur. So he says I can automatically add new rows. I think this is what I addressed the other day. Yep, yep. And we're dropping down into older comments now. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. There was something. Oh yeah. So I put a video out. Um, I switch here. I put a video out asking about like, what should we call these, these, uh, this blueprint table thing that like I'm, I've been trying to come up with a good name for it. Right. Um, I've had a whole bunch of really good, um, really good. I'm going to switch to Patreon where I had a whole bunch of names that people had submitted. Um, I've gotten things like, um, seed tables, which I thought was pretty dope. That was pretty good. Uh, blueprint tables seems to be the, uh, like I asked my Patreon supporters, what do you prefer better, blueprint tables or record blueprints? And you can see it's kind of, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Blueprint tables is the one that they like. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with that. If you have something else that you think would be a better thing, right? Just Throw it down in the comments below. Like seed tables was really good. Um, I'm really considering that one. At some point in like a month or so, I'm gonna make a post inside the AppSheet community, and I'm just gonna like I'll do a poll in there, and we can find like in in a sense finalize the official term, if you will, right? Um, that way everybody kind of has a chance to get into the get it get their opinion in. And there's plenty of time for people to see that there's this, we're trying to, that, that I'm trying to name something and I'm looking for um, suggestions. So hopefully that will um, come about because it's really helpful to have singular names, you know what I mean? For things uh, to um, really kind of get everybody on the same boat. You know what I mean? Because if you don't, if... If, if I'm talking about this, but you think I'm talking about that, that doesn't really help anybody because we're all over the place. You know what I mean? All right. Anyways, that's enough of that. Let's get to the app sheet news. There's exciting stuff. All right. So the, uh, I open up my live stream thingamajig here. We go to app sheet news. All right, so the first thing that I want to touch on is not a not news from AppSheet at all. It's just something that uh, I found out, and I don't know, maybe this will be a thing that I keep doing. Um, so I found out this week in AppSheet that if you have several actions set to this prominence of display inline and you put it on a specific column, uh, if you have more than three things set on this column, then only three show, and only the first three. I'm sure this is something that's in the documentation and I'm sure it was like announced to us at some point a long time ago that I wasn't paying attention to. Um, but like I was working on a, on an app and I tried to put something in line, you know, like on a, on a, like on a value, you know, like right here. And like, if I had three actions on this right here, if I had fourth one, I'd only see the third one. So I was kind of like, whoa, what's going on here? What's that? Oh my God. Um, but yeah, so just, you know, something, something to learn, something to know that if you're going to set your actions to uh, in line and put it on a column, you can only have three things on that column. Helpful to know. Um, and as always, before I move on, if you have any things that you want to get in on the, into this segment of the program, uh, if you find something on the app sheet documentation, you come across something in the app sheet editor, you go to some website and you're like, oh, this is dope. It would work really good with app sheet, whatever it is, 
head on. There's a link down in the description for Google Form. Submit your sub, submit your idea. Well, I'll put it on. All right, let's move on. So there has been some news uh, for the uh, for all of this. So on uh, July 8th, they uh, opened up deleting your account on the mobile device. So you know, like when you go on your app sheet account you can go to like your my account setting and inside there there's a place where you can delete your account that button is now available for mobile devices not sure how much you're going to use that but you know all right right on um on the 12th the the smart sheet provider so the optimized smart sheet provider right whatever that is was not providing uh, Rose having was not updating Rose having the row number as a key. That problem has been fixed. Um, so if you use the smart sheet as your data source and you had columns that had the row number set as the key, which is a terrible idea. You should never do that. But if you did that, um, there was problems with that. There's inherent problems, period, with the idea. But okay, they fixed whatever problems were, were going on there. On the 13th, they released a whole slew of new uh, IP addresses. So if you have a SQL server or any other external data source that connects to, um, I was hoping I would, was hoping it would drop into the list. Um, yeah, if you, if you use any of these IPs, if you have to do that, the list has changed. So just, FYI, it was something that I had to go through and update a whole bunch of stuff. And this is the real, this is the real big news down here. Unlinked automation components. So this is where uh, I've actually had access to this for a while now. I've been able to give some feedback to the team on how it works. Uh, and I'll tell you what, this really, really, really helps clean up the automation panel. So the idea is, so when you're in automation and you're working on an app, you've got all of the tasks that you can do, right? Um, and so the idea with linked tasks is I can create, I'm trying to find something that has some automation on it so that I can show you what it looks like. <laughs> Let me, bear with me here. Let me get to, uh, this one should have some. And okay, so um, if I just read this off, previously when you created an automation component, it was reusable in multiple bots. Um, you can now enable or disable the reusability of a component by enabling or disabling the linking toggle, toggle up here. And basically what they're talking about this is like, you've got the ability, so if I come over here and we say, so we've got like all of the, I've got a whole bunch of actions inside here, right? And so like the idea is all of these uh, tasks that you do down here, right? The individual boxes inside this little process section. Um, they can now be, if you come up here, we have this little linking thing available. Uh, they can be linked and it will show you all of the things that you linked this task to. And the idea is that like, I can take this guy right here and instead of just having it live inside this bot, I can move it out here to this task and now I can connect it to a whole bunch of stuff like you can see this one I connected to two things so it gives you the ability to reuse some of the tasks that you're trying to do which is really the whole point of this switching from what we had with workflows to this new automation system is that if I've got a process that I want to run through but I need to trigger that process from a couple of different places I don't want to have to recreate the process and all the individual tasks and all the details and all that. I shouldn't have to go through and redo all of that five times because I have to do it in five places. So that's the idea. And the linking makes this even easier now because I can create one task and link that to a whole bunch of stuff. So there's been, um, there's obviously a uh, release, a little note about it, right? And then there's a community announcement. Um, and uh, a, a few, few, few notes, few um, announcement thing posts. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for the word posts uh, have been made to give you further information about it. Uh, I can tell you this really does help kind of clean up the automation panel. 
because um, before, whenever you would create a task, it would like create the task over in the separate section. And if you deleted the bot, sometimes that task would still be floating over there. So like if you ever wandered over to that task panel, you know, you'd be like, holy crap, what's going on? There's like 4 billion things in here. And I only have like two automations that are doing one thing. You know what I mean? Like that problem is largely solved now. And it really does help clean everything up and it just kind of smooths out the entire um, automation creation process. It just it keeps the clutter down. It's really, really nice. All right, so that's all I got for the app sheet news. Again, if you have anything that you want to add, there's a link down below. Let me know if you find something cool, man. Let's move on. All right, continuing from last week. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this is I'm going to um, take the lot, the uh, video, geez, sorry. I'm looking at like five things, trying to do one thing. <laughs> I'm going to take the 4.1 shopping cart sample app and I'm going to update that so that it now includes the additional bits and pieces that you need in order to actually use that. Because on last week's stream, I got all the way to the point to where we could at, like create a customer and then have the customer have a set of products created for them. And that was it. I didn't take those customer products and then integrate those into the ordering process so that when you make an order, you're ordering from a customer instead of ordering from the master list of products, which is not what we need to do. So in this one, I'm gonna go through the process of changing the ordering process so that when you do an order, you first select what's the customer that you wanna do, right? And then based on that, the list of products that I then show you is gonna be the list of customer products, right? And so then when you add it, so there's a few things that we gotta do in order to make this work. I have a list right here, just kind of a quick little overview. So the first thing we have to do is add the customer column to the order table. Uh, we have to create a customer products slice, which is tied to that building order. Um, we have to change the product list that the person's actually viewing when they're adding the items to show the customer products instead of the products. Uh, we need to create a main customer database menu. I think I already did that. We need to create a main product catalog menu so that you can add a product to the main database, right? Um, we need to add a customer product link column to the order details so that we can say this order detail is this product. Um, we also need to do a, we need to update the product link so that when you create the record, instead of it, instead of you setting the product link, cause I clicked on a product, now we're clicking on a customer product. So I have to set the customer product link and then dereference from that, the product into the product. You gotta do that. Um, and the last bit is uh, just kind of like what I was just saying there, that ref new action that creates the, the order detail record that needs to be changed so that it's doing the customer product instead of the product. Those are the things that we got to do. And if you want to follow along in the, in this live stream video description, there is a link to the 4.1 sample app. So if you want to hop over there really quick and hit the copy button, you can follow along with me and we can get from 4.1 to 4.2. Uh, or if you just want and you're viewing this not live, you can just click on the link that I put in the description and get the end, end product. Hey. <laughs> okay, so I have already made a copy of the 4.1 sample app and I've you know, changed this to 4.2, obviously. And so the thing that we need to do here is we gotta start messing with the tables, right? So. Uh, let's go to open up the Google Sheet then, shall we? Makes a lot of sense. Eh? And so the thing that we got to do first, right, is in the order table, we need to add a customer link. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna copy the name of that column so I get the prefix, so I don't have to type order again, because it could be something special. Customer. Now I'll make it a link. 
wait for it to save. Go back and grab the new column. Booyah. All right. Now that we got this, so if I go to my, I'm gonna complete this guy. So now when I start an order, right, the first thing it's gonna ask me is who's the customer that this is for? So I need to make this a reference to the customers. Um, and I need to make this required. And I'll come down here to the display and give it a nice display name. I'll be like, order customer. And then I'll even give it a description of who is this order for? Or maybe better, what customer is this order for? Better. Save, 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 save. And we've got, when we drop in, it asks us, who are you ordering for? All right, well, I'm ordering for Dale. Cool. And then when I save, it drops me into the product table. All right, so this product table is the master product table. So I'm gonna kind of go out of order from my original list. Bear with me. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah, all right, maybe I won't, maybe I won't. I just gotta get back to my original list, here we go. All right, so yeah, so this product list is the master list of products. So what we gotta do is we gotta change this so that it's now a list of the customer products. Okay, so come to the slices. Make a new slice for customer products, and I'm going to call this building customer products. Or better, here we go, we'll get a little verbose. Customer products for building order. Yep, and it's even more apparent. And the thing that you got to do, so the easiest way to do this is come down here to the building order, copy the name, of the slice and then come up here and go back to your original one go to the formula and what I want is I want this where the customer link equals I'm going to index out that's not a square, a square bracket, out of this slice okay so that's a slice of the order table and so on the order I want the customer order link column I just added to my table. Then square brackets, finish off the index. So customer product equals the building orders customer link, right? So now if I save this, now this slice should have all of the products for the customer Dale, since that's the only one that's building, right? So what I need to do then is I need to change this view from the view to the customer products. So if I just come here, since it's the same table, well, nope, it's a different table, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different table. So we might have to change a few things around. Um, so I want this customer products for building order slice, all right? Yep. And now I just gotta go through and make sure that all of these things are the right things. So like that's the product name. This needs to be like the product description. This is the product image. Okay, we're good. It was just the one thing that was off, the description. Fair enough. And then we need to take over the tap, uh, the tap action. But now that I think about this, since we're changing this product list from the product table to the customer product table, um, yeah, that means that we actually have to move the actions too. That was something that I forgot in my uh, steps here. So we go to the actions and we look at products, right? So we've got this tap and then all of these things that happen inside there. So I need to move all of these from the product table to the customer product table. So I'm just going to start at the top. And when you move these, like all of these values down here, like the, this is going to change. And any of these are probably gonna change. And so it's like a whole bunch of things are gonna break, if you will, but you just gotta keep going, right? And you'll eventually get everything where it needs to be. So I need to move this from products to customer products. And then, so 
Yeah, and I'll go through and I'll do each thing individually. So this is fine because that's a slice. This needs to be changed. Okay, so we're setting the customer product, right? We're setting the product on this one. Okay, so this is actually something that uh, we need to change because we need to set the the we need to set the customer product link, which uh, is the next step of things to do. Yep, add customer product link to the cus to the column to order details. Yeah, so I don't have that yet. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that move so it puts the action back where it was. Okay, first, before we can do that then, we need to go and add the, before we can add that, we need to go into our columns and add a customer product link into the order detail because then that's gonna allow us to change where we're connecting things. So, we go to our Google Sheet, go to order details, and right here, we're right next to where it says order product, I'm just gonna insert another one, copy this, and change, add in here, customer product. Wait for it to save, come back here, go back to order details, and grab the new column. The thing that we need to do now is we need to switch the programming on how this sort of thing works. We need to, so like when we originally set it, when we originally created the record, we were just dropping a product link in. Okay, now we're gonna change that. We're gonna drop a, product, a customer product link in. And from that, I wanna get the product. So this guy, right, needs to come from this one. But we gotta set that one up first. So this needs to be, enum base type reference to the customer products table. If I save that so that it propagates through the system. Okay, now I'm gonna copy the name of that column and I'm gonna come down here to the product and in the formula, right? I'm just gonna throw in a dereference. I'm gonna say customer product. So I'm gonna go to the customer products table and get the product link. Copy that and drop it here as a dereference. So I'm literally just saying, cool, you gave us a customer product, from that, give us the product. And that's gonna set that all the time. And I'm also, now that I see this, I'm gonna change this to that. Okay, but you notice what happened over here. This is something that you, you gotta kinda watch out for. Uh, it changed the column type to a reference because I modified the formula and the value that I grabbed is a reference value. It's not an enum reference value, it's a reference. And so it's like, oh, we should make that the thing. So you gotta make sure, at some point, hopefully they're gonna fix this, but you gotta make sure that you go back through here and set that back as what I call a soft reference. Okay. And behavior is broken, yep, because this is now set with a formula. So if we go look at this behavior, now what we need to do is we need to update our action so that it uses that column that we just created to set the product link. Um, and that's why the behavior is complaining is because these things are trying to do something with, a, with this that we said, no, you can't do that. Um, now that we have that column in place, we can move things. Now we have the ability to do the correct thing that we need to do. So now is the time. What we got to do is move all of these actions that are a part of this tap process. We need to move all of these to the customer product table. So let's do that now, starting at the top and just literally just change the for this record, right? And then I can come down here and then change this, not to, oh yeah, not change this from setting the product to the customer product, and then changing this from key to whatever the name of the actual key column is for this table, which is customer product ID. So now when I when I execute this action, it's going to create set the order to the building order, the customer to the customer for the product that I just clicked on, or the, the customer product to the customer product I clicked on. Um, and this input will, will, will work just fine. 
Um, I need to change the QTY though. Um, I think that needs to be the uh, actual, because if I go to order detail, oh no, it was, oh, it was wrong all the, all the way. Oh well, fair enough. That needs to be the name of the column. That needs to be this. Just like that. All right. And then the condition, this might need checking. Yeah, because the key is no longer the key. What we're looking for is the product that the person selected inside the building order details. Okay, so that's this customer product one instead of the key. Same value, different column, different table. That should work now. Yeah, there we go. So we'll see this. This action will execute off if the thing is not in this product is not already inside the order, which is what we want. And all the columns are now set up so that they work according to how they're supposed to. And so like if I save this, this should come back as green or at least not red, right? And the other one, yeah, see this one is fine, but that other one that I left on the other table, yeah, this one is still broken because it's still trying to set this customer product. Okay, and this is the, okay, so this is the duplicate. So all we gotta do is move this guy to there, and then go through and change this, oops, change this from the product column to the customer product, and from the key to the uh, customer product ID. There we go. Yep, just like that. Make sure that this is the right thing. Needs to be order quantity detail. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Check this. Yep, this needs to be. Should still be on my clipboard. Yes. Nope. That one. There we go. Make sure my formula is the same. Good to go. Make sure this doesn't need any changing. Good to go. Okay, so that one's done. That one's done. Come back here. What else do we need? Products. So we click on this tap one. Uh, so I got to move the rest of these. Ref set. So ref set needs to move the customer products. Make sure this is that. Make sure this is that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Come here. We got to do the view product. This is really customer product, right? And I guess I need to get the name of the customer product detail view. So customer product detail. And I need to use this instead of the thing that it's using. Yeah, because I it's a different table. Yeah, that wouldn't work. And the the ID needs to be the ID. Just like that to row customer product ID and the customer product details because this is view customer products yep, it is blank yep okay good to go good to go good to go and the last one is this actual tap tap this product yep and now I got to put all those things back in there so add duplicate add new uh, let's see ref set quantity and view customer product and with that, yeah, we got a green state. Okay, so that's all of the actions that, that accomplish the, the uh, tap add functionality. Okay, so we come back here. Oh, this is, oh, this is curious. Oh, this is the name of the, I got you. So the name of the view is just products. We should change this to customer products, eh? Right? Doesn't that make more sense? Um, okay, and then, so this is of the customer products, right? Okay, so let's see, what do I need to do now? I need to take over the event action. I need to make sure that that is still what it needs to be. And so it's this card we click on, so first thing I wanna do is remove all of these. So like, I don't want you to be able to do that. I don't want you to be able to do that. I 
I certainly don't want you to do that. And then the click action, yeah. So the just clicking in the white space here. There we go. I don't want to go to details. I want it to tap execute that tap pro, uh, action that I made. So when you click on it, it does that thing that I made. Yes. And if I go to my building order, ah, yeah, okay. So we're making progress. We created a record, but it doesn't like, oh, I can't get into the details now. <laughs> okay, I can make this, I can fix this really quick. I can just make this a deck view with, uh, with no image, primary header being the customer product, no secondary header, and the summary column is the quantity. Yeah, there we go. Because now I can show an action bar underneath it. Maybe like delete, edit. Oh, I like that. Except I'm gonna move the quantity here instead of over in the corner. Better. Kinda. All right. But it's setting the product to some weird reference. So let's see what, what didn't we do right? So the first thing, if it's this guy, so I'm saying, so it got the right customer product. It's the dereference part that's wrong. So it's this. So that's not the right thing, customer products. Oh, that's why, because this needs to be products. Yeah, there we go. And we technically don't need to see that. Technically, we don't even really need that piece of information there. We could get rid of it. We can chaining dereference and get the product from the customer product if we needed any information from it. But you know, whatever, I'll leave it. All right, so, so let's see, where are we at now? So this is now the customer product catalog, right? Okay, formatting, yeah. So the, now we need to add formatting rules because if we didn't switch them over, like I've added product three, but you can't tell that I've added product three. Should be simple enough. Um, go to formatting rules. Yep, go to the product included thing. Yep, see this is just on the product table. Move it to the customer products. You gotta change the formula. So that the, okay, here we go. So that the product link is inside the building products. Oh, and then I gotta set the correct column. There we go. So you see what I'm, you see what I'm doing here? It's really just all about migrating the things from one place to another. And this is actually a very common thing that you'll do inside AppSheet when you're working on stuff. And it can seem intimidating or overwhelming when you do something like this because you make the one change and then there's a boatload of stuff that's broken. But in reality, it's all because you just change the name of something, right? And so like anywhere where the original text string for that name was, the solution is just changing that. Like you don't need to change any of your formulas. You don't need to, it's just that one string is wrong. You just need to change that one string and that's used several places. And so it's like those things are complaining or the derivatives of those are complaining. So just something to keep in mind. Moving on here, we got, I think, think that's everything that we need to do, right? Yeah, because I got this ability to do that now. You know what I'm gonna do? I don't like that. I don't like this action, the, the delete and the whatever thing. I'm going to get rid of the action bar and I'm going to, instead of the secondary, I'm gonna use the secondary column for the quantity instead of the secondary header. Cause that'll put this over here. And yeah, you see how, you see how thin these are now? Most of these don't have appropriate data, but yeah, like that's what I want. So it's nice and small. It's more like a table now. And then I can come down here and I can throw in like swipe right to edit, swipe left to delete. Ooh, I like this better. Oh, I like this better. This is better. Yeah, man, this is the way to go. 
So now when I look at my thing, right? Oh yeah, and I can tap on it to modify the quantity. I can roll right if I wanna like legit change the product. Okay, there's something we gotta address. Um, or I can drag right to just straight up delete it. Oh, I like that so much better. Yup, keeping that. Uh, is there anything else that we need to do in order to round this out? So we've got a list. Oh yeah, we need a list of master products, right? So you still need a way to add, remove, edit the master list of products, right? So uh, we need to make that view inside the, uh, the main menu. Like I wanna put it up here, like I have a master list of customers. I want a master list of products too. So if we just go to the top, make a new view of the products table, put it in the menu, call this products. Yep. Products. And I think I want this to be table. Do I have any cool grouping that I could use? No. Sort it by the name though, so it's easy to understand. And I guess we'll put the column, the uh, icon first. Might as well. There we go. Whatever, good enough. My master product list, now I can add a new product to the thing. I can click on it and change it if I really want to. Yep, oh, I can see all the uh, corresponding customer products. That's nice. Okay, so I wanna clean this view up, right? So like, that that's not very helpful in this context. But this is the master view, the main view of uh, everything. So we can't, so I don't wanna put the uh, customer there. Maybe if I put like, I'm put the product name and then the secondary header, maybe put the customer there. No, that needs to be the description. Then maybe put the customer here. See, the problem I'm running into is like that sort of that sort of setup is helpful here because I'm looking at things from the from the perspective of the master product, and so it's showing me all of the customer products. And so it's helpful to see what customer these products belong to. However, this is the main view for the customer products, and so if I go here, oh no, yeah, okay, fair enough. Because this is a main default view that I created by itself, we don't have that problem. But any place that you do view these uh, these products, these customer products, anywhere else, right? You're gonna see it this way, which I think I like. I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna turn off the action bar. Yeah, I kinda like that, that works for me. So now I've got, to shrink everything up here. I've got a list of customer products. Okay, so the thing I need to do with this customer product view, right? So originally this was just a master list of products, this view that I, I have right here. Um, and so when you didn't have a building order, we can still show you the master list of products because yeah, why not? Um, now that there's no building, like when there is no building order, there's no customer. And so the products view should go away. Because if I just show you what this will look like, if we don't do anything and I complete this order, um, if we go back to customer products, it's now empty. And I don't really want that, yeah. And you can see there's this plus button floating here. I don't really want them to be able to like, this is just read only, yeah. So I'm gonna do that. But like I don't, I don't, I don't want this to show up at all down here because we're we're not doing anything. It's an empty view. There's no point for it to be there. So I'm gonna hide this view when we don't have a building product. So the easiest way to do that is like I'm just gonna steal the logic from this new order one because then new or the building order because that has the logic that I need. I can just copy that. Go to my customer products, drop it in there. And yeah, no, that's the exact thing that I need is not blank building order. As long as there is a building order, I should be able to see 
that thing over there. But if there's not, don't show it. Boom, just like this. So if you were to get rid of the info, which is really just there to kind of help you as the person dropping into this sample app, the only thing you'd have down here is the ability to create a new order. And like the first thing it asks you is like, well, who are you ordering for? All right, well, we're ordering for this customer. Now my customer products has the list of the customers. Okay, but did you did you notice what happened there? Like when I saved the order, right? It dropped me into a list of products, but it didn't drop me into this list of products. It dropped me into the old list of products. So that's another thing that we gotta do. We gotta make sure that when you, in the form save event, for the order, there's an action that sends you somewhere. We need to change that action so that it sends you not to the products, but to the customer products. So first thing we do, find the action. The easiest way to do that is to get back to the form that you were on and then scroll down to the behavior section. Oh yeah, see this, it just, uh, it, it didn't even execute anything. All right, so this is even easier. We just need to change that to save the order. So now when this saves, it'll kick off that save order thing, stack. And if we go look at the save order stack, so it's on the orders table, save order. All it does is take us to the detail view of the order. Now you can throw anything else inside here that you wanted. That's the whole purpose of these um, save event composite actions like this where you have a stack of things because you're really future proofing your app when you set things up this way because you know in the future oh maybe I want to throw some sort of ref update or I want to create a record or I want to whatever like I want to do some conditional stuff I don't have to make any kind of major updates to anything all I gotta do is make the action and throw it in here good to go but this um, that should be everything that I needed to do. Oh, yeah, I guess the, uh, the the last bit. View this order detail. No, yeah. Uh, view this order detail. Yeah, no, no. Um, so the, I think in the form on the new order. Yeah, here we go. This is what I was looking for. There's a finishing view. It's taking us to products. I need it to take us to customer products. I think that's the last bit that we needed to do in order to get all of this kind of working the way that we wanted it to work. Now, so if I delete this to start over, start a new cut, new order. When I save this, okay, it took me to the order detail because I put that action inside the order detail. Uh, I put this action down here. So I don't want that to run. I'm just using the finishing view. One of the nice things about app sheets, it's four ways from Sunday to do anything. Okay, so delete this, make a new one. Boom, now I'm in customer products. And then when I add it, it's like, how many do you want? I want two, I want five. I want 56. It'd be dope if it would drop us in with like the text entry thing automatically. You know what I mean? And like now I can go to here and I can look and I can see I have all my, my prices. So like the thing, these are pretty small. That's pretty small. I'm gonna make that bigger. So I'm just gonna go to order details, go to the quantity and go down here to the text section. And I think I wanna make it bold. Yeah, I think I wanna make it, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, I like that. Just like that. I like that. This is order detail quantity to export. All right, man. I do believe. I do believe. This is everything that we needed to do. So if I delete this, start a fresh one, say, yep. Cool for this guy. Dropped into the products. How many do you want? I want four. Go to this. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. I like it. Oh, this is a great evolution. <laughs> this is the, this is looking nice. I'm really I'm really digging how this has come together. I have to be honest. I can't wait to see what you guys say you want to see included in this app next, right? So this is 4.2. And it's basically rounded off and done now. Um, 
the fourth iteration of this shopping cart app basically allows you to have customer specific products now. So then where do we go from here? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> That is basically everything that I got for you today. I will make a copy of this sample app available for you. I'm going to do some finishing bits, round off. I'm going to come over here and finish off the, uh, the info section so that it reflects the changes that I've made. Um, yeah, but other than that, that's all I got. I, I see nobody's got any crazy questions inside the... Uh, inside the chat thing so unless somebody drops something in there in the next few minutes i'm just gonna bounce out y'all i do appreciate you sticking around I, I appreciate all the uh the likes and the comments and the engagement and all my uh content that i throw out there it is much appreciated if you want to show your support subscribe i'm getting dangerously close to a thousand subscribers and like i'm gonna do something to celebrate that because this has been a native evolution to get that far. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it's going to be something. It's coming up. It'll be August when it happens. So yeah, man, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Everybody stay safe out there and enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching. Peace out, everybody.